Let's go to our uh, friend as well, the former Liberal leader, John Hewson. John, your uh, thoughts on the, the legacy and the life of Bob Hawke? Well, I mean, he was the intellectual larrikin, wasn't he, who became Prime Minister, and I think he will go down our history as one of the great Prime Ministers, and certainly since the Second World War, not only the best Labor leader, I think probably the best Prime Minister. He, uh, he understood Australians, he had a very f genuine sense of the national interest. Uh, he, um, he made a lot of very significant changes to the Australian way of life, uh, but he was a leader. And I think his success as a Prime Minister was that he actually was more or less chairman of the board. He got a good ministry, he let them have their head, held them accountable, of course, if they didn't perform, he, he carpeted them. <laughs> but then, you know, he didn't meddle in every day-to-day -day, uh, issue as it came, as we see today. I mean, a lot of our leaders today feel they've got to respond to everything as it breaks during the day. And he'd sit back and, and uh, clearly in charge, clearly driving force, won four elections uh, and, um, you know, made a lot of difference in terms of some of the big decisions. And obviously, the reform agenda took us out of the recession, I guess, in 83, with the accord as a fundamental element of that. Embarked on a reform agenda for the whole 80s, early, into the early 90s. Mm. A lot of environmental wins uh, on behalf of the Australian nation, whether it was... Uh, mining in Antarctica or the Franklin Dam or the Daintree. I mean, you can just ch tick all the boxes there that Hawke really did make a fundamental difference. And, uh, you know, Australians owe him a, a real debt and I'm glad he's being acknowledged uh, for that contribution that he made. Dr Houston, quite a legacy as you lay out. He sounds like the nightmare political opponent. What was it like to go up against him in the political arena? Well, I was pretty tentative, but the first thing I did, actually, was uh, we went to the 75th anniversary of the landing at Gallipoli. Remember, he Bob, uh, put together this uh, uh, 747 full of, uh, of the remaining veterans, and um, what impressed me was he treated me as an equal in that process, and over the time I spent with him and, and so on, and either in the parliament or more generally, I have some very fond memories of some time playing golf, uh, you know, playing cricket as much as uh, in the political contest. And he did respect uh, his opponents and, and obviously I respected him. I had the uh, highest regard for him. And I saw a large part of my role as not just to disagree. We, you know, as a, an opposition today, you're pretty negative all the time. But to get out in front, try and set the agenda and improve the process of government. And I think, in a sense, that process worked very well through the 80s into the 90s. And uh, today, of course, it's sort of, you know, points, points scoring, blame shifting, very negative, unfortunately, in very short term. And uh, John Hewson, something that you would have had to very much in common with him as well was his uh, fierce fight a a against racism whenever it uh, poked its head up and certainly was quite pivotal, wasn't he, in tearing down apartheid through, through sanctions and so on? That's right. I mean, Bob had a very clear sense... I think he had a clear sense of the moral responsibility he had as Prime Minister as much as the policy responsibilities he had. And he made some serious stands on big issues. I mentioned the environmental stands, which at the time were not easy for a, a leader to take. Uh, and, of course, in so many other ways, he uh, made a difference. And I, I like the way... You know, when he came in in 83, I mean, I remember distinctly, Malcolm was advised, don't go to an election in 83, wait a year, the world economy will recover, it's pull us out of recession, Hawke won't do well as leader of the opposition. No, no, Malcolm thought he could beat him, one of the great miscalculations in our history. Uh, of course, Hawke won quite well. But then he came in with a... A policy agenda that was, you know, still had bank nationalisation, for example. Mm. And there he goes, he floats the currency, he, he licenses foreign, foreign banks, he moves to, into the area of tax reform. I mean, this is real leadership and uh, I think that's what he'll be remembered for. I think he was our best post-war Prime Minister. Are we likely to see the likes of, of him again? And... Would a, a modern-day Bob Hawke get away with the things he seemed to? No, look, he was a quintessential, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> Australian at the time, and a lot of the things he did and said, I guess, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have stood the test of time. I mean, what our leaders today have got to do is not look back and try and position themselves in the past. I get annoyed when Liberals say, oh, you know, it's in the spirit of Menzies. I mean, I'm not sure that Menzies would agree with most of the things they do these days. You've got to make your mark in the circumstances in which you're living. You're making your contribution in today's circumstances, taking the country forward. And Hawke had this very good longer-term sense of where Australia needed to be and things we needed to stand up for. So against apartheid, 
or whether we needed to reform the Australian economy and, uh, and, the, and, and more broadly, a large part of our, our social fabric. Uh, you know, but he was a bit of a, as I've said before, a larrikin. Uh, and what I liked about him as a person is that he actually wore his private life on his sleeve yeah. and the electorate was very forgiving for that. They understood the pressures he was under, they understood some of the challenges he was facing as an individual and the way he met those, uh, you know, he, there was always that forgiveness in the electorate, you know, oh, that's Bob, but he was also a leader and he, so he earned their respect uh, while at the same time, you know, dealing with his own personal issues.